So, uh, how about some of that Atlay gameplay then, eh? Okay, right. So, I have two games to show you. Um, the first will be the second game I played, and the second will be the last game I played, as the other two weren't really that indicative of things, in all honesty. So, um, this game is Port Storm, and this is kind of crazy. Um, the main features I'd like to point out is the hydromatic suspension and the five round ready rack. Um, these are the two things that really saved me, and to be honest, they will show you just how powerful this thing is. Um, as said before in the overview, uh, the Atlay only has a top speed of 55, so it can be basically outsped by things. So for leading the push it's fine, but get into the fight means it's a little bit slow. Um, I use Juan Carlos because to be honest it's a light tank and if anyone has any suggestions for other commanders I'll gladly use them. Um, and also the lower plate is 45mm, is uh, roughly 450mm thick, which you can solve by using the hydromatic suspension to go down. Um, by using your gun depression or using the E key to lower yourself to the ground which incidentally kind of makes you feel more like an MBT but this thing is very very tall and while it, he and while it helps you clear up obstacles and gives you an incredible acceleration as you can see here it's really friggin fast um, it also makes your lower plate incredibly easy to hit so for the meantime I'm going to go to um, B0 on this map um, the Atlay does have an APS. I am unsure if it's a hard, I, it's a hard kill APS, but I don't believe it shoots down. Um, it, I believe it just shoots down um, missiles. However, the APS has a 10 second reload with eight shots. So in total, you get um, eight times 80 seconds of shooting down missiles. So it's it's kind of okay, I guess. Um, Otherwise, um, 5 round ready rack with 850 pen and 590 damage, which gives you a full clip potential of roughly, I'm going to say 2700-ish. So I smoke up there because I'm spotted, um, and now I'm going to do something most MBTs, say even a Marder wouldn't want to do, because, um, and as you can see here, I'm about to spank this unfortunate person. Identify. What? Are you ready? One. Two. Three. Just like that. Um, as you can see we've lowered the tank now so now it's lowered to the ground. Pretty cool. Um, however, generally speaking, I, I, I only feel like you, you, should, you should use this in MBT encounters. Um, my aiming is a little bit off this game. Um, but regardless, it is a very, very good pen. 850 is the highest pen in 120 slash 125 in a game, and it rivals, um, I believe, the Amada, or even surpasses it, and it goes roughly to where just about everybody else is. So, a um, bunch of people lying around here. Um, challenges, frontally, lower play. I don't think you're able to go through the... Um, thing just yet um, but the lower plate of, of, of the chowdy is still pretty good um, I completely ignore this leopard and uh, he set me on fire um, I take the fire out use my things and now you can see what this ready rack does okay one two and I am vastly taller than this guy even when I don't have the hydromanic suspension up last one we're gonna amarack him the thing is I was actually kind of scared at that point um, and then this Challenger 2, for some reason, just... <laughs> I don't know what he did. But anyway, we've done 6,138 damage so far. A monstrous amount of damage, I think you'll agree. Um, just by doing that, we've done... So much to these guys. Um, and also a great deal of spotting damage as well to that Charlie, who for some reason... I really don't like this, this, this lane, you know. But... Regardless, I digress. Let's keep going. So the five round ready rack, which while we haven't used it in its entirely, 
Um, the quick reload of 7.42 seconds means that you'll have a ready rack total of about 35-36 seconds, which is equal to a 7 tower 120. However, unlike a 7 tower 120, you have a vastly bigger number of hit points. So I'm going to bounce on this challenger, go for the ammo rack, and that is the final bit there, um, apart from these kills on the Mac. So we've done 8,596 damage, and I don't think I've met a vehicle in Armored Warfare that can actually do as much damage as that, as an MBT. I don't even think the XM1A3 is actually capable of surpassing that, and the XM1A3 has the highest DPM of any tier 10 MBT. Um, I'd still say that a well-driven XM1A3 could probably beat out an Atle, um, as well as an Amata, if it goes down to a um, hold down slash um, uh, turret bump fight, you know, in two tanks, like right against each other, because the Atle, I believe, um, you can see there's 700, so you can pen it there. Uh, and then of course when you're above it, kind of, but for the most part, um, that little gap there, it's a little bit smaller than the XM1A3, but this giant lower plate right there. Uh, the medium plate, I don't think people will pen as much. I mean, with the average 800 pen of uh, tier 10. Uh, let's see here, what about Black Eagle? Um, even a Black Eagle can go for the lower plate pretty well. Um, as well as the that one as well, what about missiles? Oh, well, don't use missiles. <laughs> anyway, um, let's have a look at the last game. Um, and if you think that game was hilarious, oh boy, you gotta take a look at this one. So we are on Salzburg. Um, and this is when I'm gonna show you just how devastating this thing can be in good hands. Um, it has a bigger ready rack than the Merkava 4, and the Merkavas were already touted for having a way too big ready rack, so I am, I'm kind of unsure how to think about this one, to be honest. Anyway. Anyway. So. We have an encounter battle. There's a hilarious number of challenges. Um, this is probably because of the pesh ammunition. I'm not sure how it works against the outlay. However, I imagine the lower plate may be um, kind of weird. Um, the other outlay there, um, this guy, no, uh, this guy, um, I want that camouflage so bad. That looks really good. Um, if we could do like the Black Sea incursions and the Caribbean crisis again, I would gladly farm the fuck out of that game mode. Um, I'm, I'm actually kind of unsure how this would fare in PvE simply because the bots will go straight for the lower plate and maybe for that bit as well. So for the moment I, I can see this thing being absolutely devastating in both glops and it's already quite devastating in PvE, in PvP. Okay, so like I said top speed of about 55, I'm using Juan so it goes a little bit faster. I've managed to get it to up to about roughly 50 and I was looking at that bit there. Um, I was just trying to see how fast it can go and for some reason um, I was accused of using my wallet. Um, no, all of this gold was basically I've been around for almost four years at this point. Um, I was in the Alpha, I was there when the T64A was a tier 5 and it had missiles and everything. I was there when when tier 6 wasn't even a thing and when uh, where uh, tier 5s could do 90% of the damage of a tier 3's health. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of gun, gun running around. Did you see there? I have a decal. I have a thousand codes for my decal. Like, Jesus. If you want one, just ask. Because um, one of the CMs gave me this Excel spreadsheet and I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Anyway, hold down situation, it's pretty good. I haven't used the hydromatic suspension E button simply because I don't think it's really needed when you go hold down. You're better off using um, the gun depression rather than just doing anything else really, as you can see here. Um, Challenger gives me a bump, unsure why. Um, and this is the wasteland camouflage, which is actually pretty decent. So we're just waiting here for now. 
Um, you can see on the minimap that my team is gonna lose. Um, they've had nobody go down. This is a thing that I've noticed with PvP games, is that a lot more teams are just literally leaving giant blind spots open. Uh, okay, PLO 1. You ready? 1. 2. And he's down. Okay. Am I spotted? No, something would have spotted me by now. And that means that all of the enemy team is probably on the other side of the map. So that means we can go. However, um, this is probably one of the few disadvantages of the Atlay. And as I said before, that's the top speed. This means it's going to limit how fast I can get into the fight. So I was pointing my front here, wondering if I was going to get spotted by something. And then I make the decision. Okay, I've got to come up from those guys from behind the rear. I've, I've got to do. I've, I've got to go. Um, I almost fall off the bridge here, which would actually been a pretty fun thing to do. Um, but... Otherwise, um, yeah, I, I don't think it needs a speed buff. In fact, I think in all honesty, it could probably do with, say, a three round clip. Um, that's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm fine with a three round clip. Um, the Sphinx here has the very unfortunate thing of basically blocking this XM1A3 for me. So I wonder where he is. Um, I'm trying to go for the XM1A3. Go for the Armada instead. Oh shit. Um, okay, smoke up. Smoke up. Okay, so I fire another shot in. I remember that I've got a pretty quick ready rack, so stay here for now. Oh shit. Oh, there's another Amada. Oh no, wait, that is the Amada. Where's the Amada come from? Uh, we punch through the XM1 AFE's lower plate. Going for him then would have been a good idea, and now I'm going to go into this gun depression so this Merkaba can't get at me. And for now, I'm. I don't think this Amada fully. Well, I mean, as you can see here, I'm actually using the hydromatic suspension to make it so that he can't hit my lower plate. Um, but when you do that, of course, you're kind of vulnerable. So for now, um, the Merkava did five, 500 to me. Um, and this was a pretty tense fight. I make a lot of mistakes in this fight, to be honest. Um, and this Merkava, for some reason, I'm unsure why he ran instead of using, say, the wreck of that XM1A3 for cover. So for now... Oh, shit. Um, okay, and now I'm being called a noob, and I don't think I am. I've done twice my damage in hit points, unlike some of these people. So, anyway. I'm down a thousand hit points versus this Merc. I screwed up. Um, I've done a thousand hit points to him, he's done a thousand six hundred to me. Um, I know that I have a bit of I I know I have a big I know I have a bigger ready rack and my tank is vastly more agile. So for now, if I can do it, I just need to um, punch through his lower plate because I know because I think he reloads his ready rack faster than I do, but I can get off those shots faster because I have a faster aiming time and stuff, and I can also punch through his lower plate. So as you can see there, the ready rack I emptied into him. To be honest, if I was this guy, I I would have just side scraped like. Like, I would have just gone down there and hit my lower plate and he'd probably been able to get me. Because throughout this entire time, I was genuinely wondering why he simply didn't rush me and use that massive hit point pull. Because we've both got ready racks, he can probably realise this at this point. Um, and, he, and he just keeps running off and... This guy, I, I honestly feel if he was aggressive, he probably could have killed me. Um, I'm unsure if that's how everybody thinks. Of course, he's got that APS. Um, the side armor of the of the Alte, Atle, Alte, I, I think it's the Alte, isn't exactly that good. And as you can see here, I can keep peeling off shots on this guy. And the final time he was aggressive, well, it didn't work. So I'm on 422 hit points. And to be honest, I must admit, I was kind of drunk on victory at this point. I kind of correctly thought that I could go up there, go behind them all, and go straight for them. Um, you're going to see that victory syndrome go down very fast. Um, I've, I'm on three kills, 7,831 damage. To be honest... Um, our team could possibly still lose that, as you can see here, um, our team's on kind of low on hit points and that challenger has a good bit of health. The XM1A3 I believe is a one shot, 
Um, and that challenge is going to do something completely unexpected. Oh shit, the challenge is coming for me. Well, run, run. But unfortunately, he kind of messed up. Because, uh... I don't think he should have done that. Okay, four kills, 8,050 damage. That's fine. Um, Spitfire. Are you going to suicide rush the XM1 e 3 Are you sure this is a good idea? Okay, I'm going to smoke up my fire and I'm going to expose my little plate and rip. I uh, I kind of rage quitted after that, to be honest. Uh, and that challenge is going to kill him. But yeah, um, even when you've got a super mega powerful tank, don't get drunk on victory and suicide rush. It's not exactly that good for you. Um, so, yeah. There you go. That's a... Uh, that's a... Those are two pretty good games. In total, 8,000 damage per game is incredible, frankly. Um, I wasn't... I mean, I'm not a unicorn. I'm a pretty good blue player, but Jesus, that was a, that's a lot of damage. Um, and I'm up to 4 out of 5 for the mission progress. Uh, second of the team, that challenger on our side, really did a good one. Um, as well as the XM1 E3. Those two guys did pretty well. Um, as well as the XM1 E3 on their team as well. But overall, I think I probably had the most pivotal battle of that moment. Was when I intercepted the XM1 E3, Merkava and T14, which is where the bulk of my damage came from, as you can see here. Um, basically, four hit points of the Merc of a, most of the T14 Armada, about a little, a little bit less than half, and these two guys as well for four kills. So, yeah, it's it's really powerful. Um, if I wanted to nerf it, um, I would make the turret ring a little bit bigger. I would reduce the penetration from 850 to 825, maybe 820. Um, I would nerf the damage from 590 to about 550 and put the ready rack from 5 rounds to 3 rounds and keep it at 7.42 seconds to basically give it a hybrid MBT slash light tank roll. I feel like the amount of hit points it has is okay. This is a pretty heavy vehicle at 65 tons, but at the moment it's pretty damn powerful. Anyway, that was some uh, Alte gameplay for now, um, and I'll see you all for the next one. Bye!